All right, folks, here, uh, you know what? I probably ought to add my good buddy, Jamie Umiyama. There he is. Hi, Jamie. There I am. We've got to make sure you're on here, right? It's very important to yeah. add you to the broadcast. Yeah. Otherwise, people be like, well, who's that talking in the background? <laughs> anyway, uh, so, folks, we, there's a lot going on, obviously, with Notre Dame football and and coaching changes and hires and, and searches and all that, uh, plus some other news that's happened, uh, guys coming back. All this kind of stuff. So, Jamie and I thought we would just go ahead and and uh, uh, talk about all those things, and then we'll answer some questions at the end. If there's people here, you know, on the live broadcast, uh, we'll just answer your questions as well. We'll get to that here shortly. Uh, Jamie, you know the Mike Elston thing. Um, I'm not sure either of us were really that surprised uh, by the d- decision, um, and and. You know, I, I first of all, I want to say I think that Mike Elston's a, a good D line coach. There's there's no argument to be made there. Yeah, he's no done doubt. really done a really good job for Notre Dame for for a number of years, and uh, and and so you know, I want to wish Mike Elston the best. Uh, he's always been real kind to the media and, and and that type of thing, and and uh, you know, hopefully his career will go where he wants it to go. So uh, I think I want to start by saying that you know, and and just congratulating him on going back to Michigan and, and, you know, hopefully he has a good situation there. As far as Notre Dame's concerned, um, I actually think it's a good opportunity to be honest with you. And, and I mean, no disrespect to Mike Elston by any stretch of the imagination, but I just think it's an opportunity to kind of start new and fresh. And, you know, now the other thing is you've got a defensive coordinator. If he has a defensive line coach in mind that he'd like to work with, I think that that can help, and we found out that you know maybe with uh, Heacock, that was maybe a little bit of the problem of him not wanting to move from uh, Iowa State is the fact that he couldn't bring any of his assistant coaches with him. But uh, you know now you have an opportunity to kind of bring a guy, and you know if if you find somebody and it works out, so um, it it will be interesting to see how this all plays out. But first, your thoughts on the loss of Mike Elston. Well, I mean, it, it is a loss because, you know, he did a great job, um, you know, for, for many years. Right. Um, but I also think that, um, you know, and, and like you said, I don't, don't mean as any disrespect to Mike Elson at all, but I think they have a chance to upgrade there because as, as you know, as good of a job that Mike Elson did, um, I think there's guys who are equally as good as him as a coach. There's a lot of great defensive line coaches out there that they fine you know obviously I put up a list of of potential guys that they could go after and there's a lot of great guys on that list um and, and I, I think personally too w- with Mike Elston he was very hit and miss as a recruiter um you know very hit and miss is, is with evaluations too right like where he'd fall in love with a guy um that was a project and um you know those guys didn't all turn out right and um, even if you look at the last, you know, five years or so, you know, this run that Notre Dame's been on, most of the guys uh, that he, they had the most success with were guys that he didn't recruit, right? They were guys that Keith Gilmore recruited, um, you know, especially those defensive ends. At one defensive end class from 2016, maybe the best yeah. defensive yeah. line class that they've put together, and that was a Keith Gilmore group, right? Obviously, that was like, you know, Khalid Kareem and – Dalen Hayes, both Michigan guys, and and uh, Gilmore obviously had a lot of Michigan ties and Detroit ties, and that helped a lot uh, in landing those guys. Um, and certainly, you know, he was the guy. He was the guy who found Ade Ogundeji, right? That that was him. So, um, I mean, Elston certainly coached them up and developed them, uh, you know, along with Larry Black. But um, I I think there's a chance there to to even get better as a recruiter. Obviously, it hurts with you'd like to have that stability. I know Keon Keeley really liked uh, Mike Elston. So that's something that's, you know, Notre Dame's that just one other obstacle that they're going to have to come to keep them in the class. Um, but I, I do think they have a chance to get, like, like you said, a fresh start, getting an, another guy in there. Um, also, too, if it's a little harder, if, say, if Marcus Freeman, you know, I think he did like Mike Elson a lot as a defensive line coach, but he's, again, passed over for the defensive coordinator job. And I, let's be honest, you, you know, that's the kind of thing that there's a lot of times too, there's bitter feelings about that kind of stuff. And so there's, you, so you kind of avoid that. And also let's just say that Marcus Freeman wanted to go in a different direction as, with a recruiting coordinator. 
well, that's tough to do if you're getting rid of, uh, you can't take that, to take that title away from Mike <clears throat> Elston, especially after he got it back. That's tough. And I, I mean, I don't know that that's what he wanted to do, but it would have been very awkward if he did want to do it. Now he kind of gets a fresh chance, a fresh start, gets a chance to give that title to somebody else, um, you know, maybe possibly with a new hire and, and, and we'll see where it goes. But I, I definitely think that um, like you, I think the chance for a fresh start uh, could be a really good thing. I think so too, uh, really for all involved, you know, and I think that's probably one of the reasons Mike Elston wanted to leave is, is a fresh start and, and something different. So, um, you know, you mentioned the recruiting thing and I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, there, there were just too many projects and, and really just too many projects in the last couple of classes. And, and, you know, that's going to come back to haunt Notre Dame. Don't kid yourself. You know, uh, if Jason Anye and Will Schweitzer and, you know, they already lost the uh, Devin uh, Pui, uh, and then, you know, uh, you've got a lot of guys that are kind of uh, reaches at this point that, that for the last couple of classes, this last class was pretty good. Although, you know, Donovan Heinish, I think, is is a guy who who's going to take a while because he's just not big enough right now. Uh, but I think he'll be a, a solid player. It's just it's going to take a while for him to get bigger. And again, too many projects. You've got to if you're going to get to that next level of you know, right now Notre Dame kind of sits in the five to ten range as far as that's where the program is. If you're going to get into that top five and be consistent there, you need some big dudes. And we saw that in the uh, national championship game with. Georgia, you know, pretty much those big dudes were doing a heck of a job, both both uh, plugging up the middle, but also getting pressure on the quarterback. And so, uh, I think for Notre Dame to have any any chance to compete, as we've talked about, it, you got to ha- win those trench wars, and you know, you're never going to out athlete Alabama. So you got to make sure that you can win the ter- trench wars, and that's that's going to be very difficult because they get the number one players all the time at D-line, and they get a lot of great O-line too, and and for good reason. They put them in the league. So Notre Dame's got to start landing some of those guys too, guys that are 290 pounds now, Jamie, you know, uh, yeah. 300 pounds now, not somebody that you have 275 and you have to put a bunch of weight on. So And then it takes three years in, in the yeah. program before they're really at that level, and that's also why you see – um, although like, you know, Notre Dame's second group D line is better than a lot of other teams, second group D line, but there's a drop off, yeah. there's a pretty big drop off. Right. And I think that's something that you see when you take guys that need two, three years within the program to physically develop specifically. Yeah. Right. So, um, cause even like a guy like Howard Cross, who, I mean, I, I really like Howard Cross. I think he still has a chance to be a really good player for Notre Dame, but let's just be honest. If he was. 300 pounds i mean i think he could be a dominant player but he's not and so and he's somebody came in and he was like 250 pounds or whatever and he has to just put on weight and you can't just put on 50 pounds over like one semester or whatever that's got to take time you got to be able to do that and he's probably never going to be a 300 pound guy right so it's it's a process and when you take guys like that and it's not that you don't want to take but you don't want to take too many of them and I think, yeah. like you said, Notre Dame would take too many of them. And that's how you get into a situation where, you know, all of a sudden now you're looking at strong side defensive end this year. You know, there's still developmental guys. And one of those guys has to take a really big jump this year or else they got to start shifting other bodies from other spots. You know, the interesting thing is uh, Marcus Freeman's going to have to get on the phone and call Isaiah Foskey. He's going to have to get on the phone, call the Adam Alola twins. He's going to have to get on the phone and kind of re-recruit these guys because they, you know, they thought, all right, well, we know who our coach is. Uh, at least we know we can get better under this guy. Now we got a brand new coach, and and uh, so I, I I'm sure they've had that conversation already. You know, this wasn't a surprise to Notre Dame that Mike Elston was going to do this. Uh, but and, and I don't think they'll probably lose guys. But it, it is something that you're going to have to address. And then you mentioned Keelan Keeley and and of course uh, Brennan Vernon. Those guys are going to have to be re-recruited, but. Not just that. You've got the more kid out of D.C. You've got David Hicks. You've got a lot of these uh, uh, defense alignment that, that you're still recruiting uh, that had a great relationship with Mike Elston. And, you know, we've seen this happen before, Jamie, where we were hoping Mike Mickens could come in and, and make a huge impact. But if you just don't have that relationship developed. You're late to the game. Yeah, now. you're late to the game. It's tough. So whoever that new coach is is going to have to – really uh, hit the ball, you know, hit the ground running, and he's going to have to get a lot of support 
for Marcus Freeman as well to try and recruit these guys and Chad Bowden. I mean, these guys yeah. really need to step up their game because uh, you can't fall behind in this. And look, we've mentioned it before, Jamie. Interior D line. I mean, they got to get two Critical elite class. guys. I mean, guys that are three hundred pounds. They're going to need them because. Yeah. They just don't have them, and and th those guys have to be able to play early. Who and they're going to need to get two of them in this class. So, uh, it's going to be a tall order, and we'll have to see. Um, you know, we mentioned Heacock at defensive coordinator. We know he came in to get interviewed, and uh, it, it, I'm a little surprised he didn't take the job. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I, I don't know why you would interview for a job and not take it. I know that happens. But it just, I don't know, it just seems weird that he wouldn't take the job. And uh, what, what is your thoughts on this? And, and where do you think Notre Dame should go now that Heacock uh, probably isn't in the mix? They may go back at him, throw more money at him, whatever. But uh, as of now, it doesn't look like it's going to be a, a, a marriage at this point. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think he's a great coach. And, you know, so that, I mean, it easily if he would have been hired – I think that's the guy that all Notre Dame fans should have been happy with in terms of, you know, his track record, what he's done, how he's adapted to the different competition, how he's adapted to his personnel, what he's got out of his personnel. I mean, Iowa State is not recruiting close to what the players at Notre Dame it, it can recruit. And they've been like a top 30 defense every year um, in, you know, in an offensive league. Right. And, um, you know, so I, I think when you look at it from that perspective, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's a, a blow when you don't land a guy like him. And I'm not sure, you know, we don't know specifically why, like if it was, maybe he did want to bring some assistance. And I, I'm sure that's a lot of the thing. That was like one of the things with like Mike Elko when he took the job. But at that point too, Mike Elko had more leverage because yeah. it was like, well, this is like, BK, you're blowing everything up here. I better be able to bring Clark Lee or else forget it right yeah and he you know Heacock wouldn't have that leverage and or his leverage is saying well I feel comfortable staying with Matt Campbell who he's coached with for many many years now right obviously he's not just been with him at Iowa State he was with him at Toledo uh before that for many years so I mean he's got obviously like a great relationship with him and let's face it too Matt Campbell I mean he was looking at other jobs he was looking to get out this year and I mean, if that Michigan job comes up, if Harbaugh leaves, I mean, Matt Campbell's probably going to be a guy who interviews for it, and he's going to probably think that I can go to that job, right? So there's all those kind of scenarios that probably played into it uh, that I imagine why it didn't happen. Um, I, I think the one thing you could say with Heacock is I wouldn't imagine he's going to become in He's definitely not going to bring a Marcus Freeman type of impact as a recruiter, as a coordinator, No, right? So, I mean, his recruiting is going to be like, my defense is great. Come play for me. Like, yeah. it's not going to be, he's not going to be there, you know, wearing vans for a, a yeah. certain player. Injury. He's not doing all this extra stuff. He doesn't care about that. I, and the other thing is, if you look at kind of his track record and where he's been at, it's been a long time since he's been at a big school. Right. And so there is an adjustment and recruiting to Iowa State, recruiting to Toledo, recruiting to Purdue and Kent State. And he was a head coach at Youngstown State for a long time. You're very focused in your region and what you're kind of doing. And if you look at kind of who he's recruited for Iowa State, it's like Iowa guys, right? Like guys from that state. So it, it is a it, it is a bit of like almost like a culture shock to be able to have to do that. Um, and then for that person to be, you know, in their sixties to have to adjust to that, it's not always something that is easy to take. So I definitely think from a recruiting perspective, there's a lot of upside with some of the other guys yeah. that, uh, that they're after. All right. So let's, let's go through some D line candidates, you know, I know, and this will be the interesting thing because if you're a defensive coordinator, do you want to bring your own D line coach? I mean, you got a great list of guys here when you're talking about, Al Washington, who was at Ohio State, I know he was let go, uh, but he was coaching linebackers, and he's more of a D line coach. Um, and and so, but I really like him. You know, Greg Scruggs is a guy that that uh, they have some uh, history with that type of thing. Uh, I I mean, Charlie Partridge. I mean, there's a guy who's done a tremendous job at Pitt. Awesome. And, I mean, boy, I I would love to have an opportunity to at least 
explore that because he really has done an amazing job. We've mentioned Larry Black before, uh, and we know for a fact the players that that he coached under Notre Dame yep. loved him, absolutely loved him. And as you mentioned, the you know when when Notre Dame played against them this year, I mean their D line really gave Notre Dame some fits. <laughs> So I think that that was part of it. Uh, you mentioned Dennis Johnson, who's the D line coach at Baylor, and Lord knows Baylor had one heck of a defensive line this year, and and uh, didn't take long for them to kind of get going again under uh, Dave Miranda. So, uh, and then uh, you mentioned Sean Spencer, Randall Joiner, uh, the D line coach at Ole Miss, kind of an up and coming guy. Chris Rumpf is a guy that you mentioned, and, and Andre Carter's another. Um, out of this group, I mean, who do you think? would be a good hire and, and a realistic hire. You know, if you could pick three or four that you think would be a good hire and a, and a realistic hire. Um, I think the most realistic, I, I mean, I <clears throat> honestly, in just terms of what these guys have shown, I, I think they're all good hires. Yeah, I, I do. I think that, yeah. And I think when you look at, so that, that's why when you say you lose Mike Elson and you're like, man, that, I mean, it is a blow, right. And, and it's, it, but it's not going to be necessarily as tough to replace that level of coach because there's a lot of good guys out there. And it's not just like, it's not like there's only, there's just Larry Johnson at Ohio state. And that's the only guy. No, there's a ton of great defensive line coaches out there. Um, and guys were rising up too. Right. Um, I, and I would say in terms of realistic, I, I think you always look at past relationships and you look at Washington, the fact that he's unemployed right now, Yeah, he coached defensive line with, Marcus Freeman, uh, when you know when Marcus Freeman was the DC the first year at Cincinnati, they have that previous relationship. He's a lights out recruiter, phenomenal recruiter, immediate huge upgrade at recruiting. Like, yep. he will. I, I, I would say like I would be very surprised if they if he was the guy that they didn't end up getting Keon Keon Keeley back in the class and yeah. you know building on that. Like he will kill it as a recruiter. Um, you know Scruggs fantastic job obviously has a relationship with with freeman from cincinnati too um and a guy who did a, just a fantastic job with with what they had at cincinnati and developing those guys yeah um and and, and a good job as a recruiter too um so those two guys kind of stand out as like obvious to me realistic type guys and some of the other guys like like partridge to me is like one of those like okay, this is a home run hire because of what he's done and, and what he's shown. And man, he just, he knows good D alignment too. Like he, he finds guys that have that traits and then he brings the best out. And like some of the guys that pit, like very few of the guys that pit were a high, high recruited guys, but they had like great athletic traits and they had to, um, um, develop them. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 he really, really did um, a fantastic job. So, I mean, he's kind of coached all over. He's been with Narduzzi f for the last five years, or, or well, I guess four years, or whatever, <clears throat> five years at, at, since 2017. And he's got the assistant head coach. Level. So, I mean, you're going to have to pay a lot to get him out of there. But, I mean, to me, he's at least a guy that you make a call for, right? And really, a I mean, a bunch of these guys or whatever, but I would say Scruggs, and uh washington are got to be like top of the list guys for they kind of check all the boxes in terms of like you also know what you're getting with them and so they'll know right away whether or not they can be fits right like freeman will know like man this guy he's a great coach does all this stuff i don't know if he's gonna fit at notre dame and be able to recruit to notre dame right so um but i i think you know that right away so to me i, I wouldn't be surprised if early on we hear that these are two guys that are going to be like top of the list. Yeah. It'll be interesting when you get to the, the defensive coordinator and, and you know, whether that guy wants to bring his guy. And so, yeah. you know, I think you want to kind of leave that open and not hire somebody immediately until you know what you're going to get a defensive coordinator, but at the same time, keep people on the back burner saying, Hey, you know, we're going to push for you. Uh, you know, when we do hire our new defensive coordinator, you know, we're going to push for you to make sure that, that, you know, hopefully you can be the guy. So I think you can kind of recruit both positions at this point, but uh, I do think you have to leave it open and not just hire uh, a defensive line coach right away um, unless you're just going to force somebody on somebody. And and that, that can happen. I mean, that certainly can happen. Um, we've talked, Jamie, about uh, the defensive coordinator position. Uh, you know, we've heard um, 
Derek Mason's a guy. We've heard Doug Belk is a guy uh, from from uh, Houston. Uh, wh- what do you think of these two hires? You know, with with Mason, I mean, they had one hell of a defense at Stanford. But I wonder how much you know. It, it seemed like w- when they had Randy, that's when they had a hell of a defense. Uh, you know, the the D line coach. Hart, yeah. yeah, when they had Randy, that's when they had one hell of a defense. Was it a situation where it was Mason or was it Randy made Mason? You know what I mean? Uh, and they did a yeah. good job of recruiting. And I don't know what it is, but there's no doubt Randy Hart's a tremendous D-line coach. And as soon as he left, they just didn't quite have the same level of defense. Um, so, you know, with Mason, what, what what are you thinking there? Well, I mean, we should say, point out, too, that when Hart left, Mason wasn't there, so they didn't go down under Mason. They were yeah. always high yeah. out un, under Mason. But um, I always thought at at v- Vanderbilt, despite them not matching the talent, like they played good, sound defense, and they were physical. Like even when they played Notre Dame and in that game, like they shouldn't have had the athletes to hang with Notre Dame, uh, yet they did. You know, like they and they were always never. It was never where they got bullied in games. And I always thought that Mason did a good job and kind of like, they took on his kind of mentality, like where remember he said, Brian Kelly, come see me <laughs> after the game. Yeah. Like people were angry about it at the time, but now that they hate Brian Kelly, they're like, Hey, hire this guy. Cause yeah, 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 exactly, I yeah. also hate Brian Kelly, but <laughs> um, he, yeah, like, and, and I, I would say, you know, when there's that piece of it with heart and I think you, I mean, it, it takes, all the pieces right you have to have you can't just have if you if you have a bad cornerback coach and i mean you're gonna look bad as a coordinator too right so i i think that is part of it but i mean i'm confident notre dame's gonna get a good defensive line coach so i'm not worried about that the one thing i'll say is that you know at vanderbilt the defense weren't great they were good for what they did but i i was impressed with what they did at auburn this year because they were supposed to take a big step back because they lost a lot and um and obviously the team wasn't very good right like harson um you know i mean he's on the hot seat you could i mean you know auburn too they could fire you a year and a half in and the defense if anything was the best part of it like they were a top 20 defense um in the country um and obviously you play in the sec west it's, it doesn't get tougher than that stuff yeah. is toughest co- uh, division in, in college football so um you know i i think he can still coach and i think he'd be a good hire i also think he's a guy who would i mean still kind of passionate connects with would connect with recruits and all that um yeah and but the hard thing is interesting because that i mean 100 percent as stanford when they lost randy hart be it was because they didn't recruit at a level where they had to recruit these guys like these three-star kind of plugger types and then he made them into what they were yeah like yeah really good especially the, the guys two gapping and just dominating at the point of attack and um you know randy hart too is another guy it, you know was at notre dame obviously for a year in, in weiss's last year i would have loved to see him be at uh, notre dame long term he yeah no there. doubt i think he would have done a great job would no i think so job. too yeah <clears throat> um but yeah that is, that is interesting but i think you know with mason no matter who they get in that in uh, on the defensive line coach they're going to get a good guy and they're going to be still pretty good and obviously if all those guys are back they're still going to be pretty good there so i'm not i'm not at that worried about it from that sense what about delk belk i think he's like a definitely like a rising star guy obviously um he just went like he was making like five hundred thousand a year got bumped up to a million i mean you're making a million dollars as a coordinator at the you know group of five level um you know you're pretty valuable and he really kind of turned that around i watched you know houston a few games this year i really like what they did really like how fast and just just how fast they played um they were another like i think they finished 21st in f plus um you know and another like aggressive guy young guy um the question would be he coaches safeties so what does that mean for because i think mason even though he is a db guy too i think you know he's been around long enough that i think he you know those guys who've coached whatever i mean he coached running backs he coached like he's just coached everything he'll be able to do that um you know belk that would be my one question it's like so is he going to be the inside linebackers coach what are you going to do in from that sense um but i mean and I, he's also a very good recruiter and and is going to recruit well as well but then recruiting to houston 
recruiting to um, Notre yeah. Dame. It's a very big difference, very big difference. And with Mason, I mean, he was at Vandy, he was at Stanford. You know, he's still, even though Auburn is like night and day difference uh, to to Notre Dame in terms of recruiting, I mean, it's still big boy recruiting what you got to do. And so he's kind of got that on his list ahead of Belk, but certainly Belk, I think, is going to be, if he doesn't, I, I don't know if he's, if he's, if he doesn't get this Notre Dame job, I'd imagine he's probably going to stay at Houston for a year. I don't think he's going to be at Houston for long. He's going to yeah. be a power five defense coordinator very soon. Yeah. It's interesting. Mason's kind of the safe choice and, and, and Belk is a guy that, um, you know, maybe you try and hit a home run with and, and try and catch an up and coming guy. So, um, that will be, uh, it, that will be interesting to see how that one all unfolds. And, you know, and, and, uh, to be honest, I mean, to be fair, I, I don't think it's just those two guys. I'm sure that they're going to be looking at other guys at this point too. Uh, but we just know that those are two names that, that they are interested in and, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> uh, got a new kicker. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting thing. What, what do you make of this? Um, <clears throat> I, I would think that they didn't feel really confident with, um, you know, Brian who they got on, on campus already. Right. Like that's the way uh, I'd look at it. They, that's the hundred percent, the way I'd look at it. Cause if they thought that he was going to be a guy and we've only saw see him very briefly. Right. I mean, and we, you know, you see him be, beginning in practice. The only thing we could say too, is that like, he seemed to make most of his kicks when we watch, he didn't have the leg of door. That's no. for sure. Yeah. Not and at all. Yeah. So, um, so, what I don't understand I mean, is how do they keep getting sold a bill of goods on these guys? You know, Bram Bleet was supposed I, to be the best punter in the world. You know, uh, Brian was supposed to be the best kicker in the country. I mean, you know what I mean? They keep getting sold a bill of goods on these guys. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know enough about the technicalities <clears throat> of like developing a kicker to know like this guy's the best, but, um, but that's why they like, listen to all a, these kicking gurus and they're always wrong. How about get, get, do what everyone else is doing. Get a punter from Australia. Yeah. I, I don't get every it. single Anyone who has an Australia, a, a punter from Australia, the guy like kicks it 60 yards every yeah, I time. Know. Like I, I don't know. those guys, like I, that's all you got to do there. Right. So um, I would guess, yeah, like, I mean, it says a lot about where they're at. And to me it is like, because that, if you're going to play tight games, like look at, and, and just this, and you know, door, he made some big kicks, but he also was very inconsistent. Right. Yeah. And very inconsistent. And, and missed more than a few that he should have made right yeah o over the last couple of years so um i think you know consistency is key and we don't we don't see enough in practice but obviously they saw enough to know that at the very least they need competition there so um yeah i i, I would think that i mean it's i guess you feel good that they pick somebody up but also you don't feel very good about where you know joshua bryan is is at in his thing right now and maybe that changes later on and or maybe he wins the job right we don't know but um we know definitely that they at least have questions about him or else they wouldn't have brought in another kicker all right uh another topic we want to talk about is uh the hire of uh chancy stucky the wide receivers coach um you know i think a lot of people were hoping for one or the other here you know uh whether it was uh wiggins or 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 um shepherd um you know, I think if truth be known in in the in the interview process, they they just like Stucky better than they did Shepard. I, I I that's what I heard many times that that's what it boiled down to is they just liked uh, Stucky better and just felt like he was a better fit. And uh, you got to go with that. And uh, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, he doesn't have a lot of experience and blah blah blah. Well. You know, if you can call and you talk to Dave Aranda, you you, you talk to um, uh, Dabo Sweeney. Dabo. You know, <laughs> those are two guys I'd probably trust their opinions on things. And and both those guys are saying this guy's a, an elite, you know, wide receivers coach, going to be a star, great recruiter, great person, can coach really well. I mean, you got to go with that, especially if you've had your meeting and you know you've interviewed both of them and. And uh, you, you think that he's a better fit anyway. So yeah. um, I, I kind of actually like the hire. I really do. Uh, we'll see. You know, it's a gamble. Just like any anytime you take a young guy, it's always a gamble. You know, Marcus Freeman is a gamble. But 
you you know you do your due diligence and try and talk about a lot of different guys and find out, uh, which I'm I'm sure he did, and and you just got to go with it, and and hopefully this guy can get in there and and do a lot better job and than than what Dell did and selling things, and so I'm just hoping that this thing can take off because they really need some wide receivers, Jamie. Oh yeah, I, I think I, you know him recruiting is is going to be like the most critical part of it right and what he can do from that perspective um and that's part of the interview process right is that he's got to kind of win them over in that process so um you know and he's got to be doing the same thing to uh you know 16 year old kids right yeah yeah um that that is kind of important and i i think what everybody sees and i know i see it too right and i get caught up in too but you look at um you know how someone looks on paper and their track record and all this and you're saying man this guy's a no-brainer right like remember last year when they hired o'leary and then there was taver johnson right who i mean this guy coached ohio state he had he had connections with freeman at purdue and he had all this and all that right and you would have thought, man, this is a no brainer that this guy's the hire. Cause look, he's just got way more of a pedigree than, than, um, O'Leary, but you know, obviously O'Leary, it wasn't just an interview process, but he had like a long interview process because of, you know, his, uh, position on the staff previously that was able to say that, no, this guy can do it. And this guy will, you know, has that work ethic. I mean, he's did a pretty great job in, in yeah. year one with bad circumstances when he loses Kyle Hamilton halfway through the year. And he just landed Peyton Bowen in recruiting, so I think he's doing all right. So and Aidan um, Schuler so, and you know Aidan, oh for sure, yeah. And, and they're still and in good I, shape with Caleb Downs. You know they, they they've got they're looking really good at, at safety right yeah. now for recruiting. Yeah, and so I I think it's one of those things where you look at it. Well, like I know Kalani Sataki, the BYU coach, he had that would seem like man, it makes total sense that he would be the Oregon guy, right? Over like a Dan Lanning because he's obviously not just had that ex- experience as a good defensive coordinator or whatever, but look what he's done at BYU and all this. And, you know, apparently his uh, interview at Oregon was one of the worst that yeah. they've ever had. So it's just like, well, what are you going to do? It's just someone has a bad interview, but you're like, ah, but look at that resume. It's like, well, sometimes you just got to go with the gut feel. It's just like when you're interviewing me or talking to me the first time, you have to know me or you, you're listening to Christian and, and what he's telling you about me and all that too, right? It's just, there's all those kind of pieces of it that people don't see when they're like, yeah, see, I, I wouldn't have hired you, you know, cause you, you didn't impress me at all. When I talked to you, <laughs> it was Christian and Matt there we that, go. that did, there we you go. know, I, yeah. I did my due yeah. diligence. See, I went yeah. out and, and you know, I, I listened Christian to what they had to me, say. And then you were like, ah, you know, I don't know. Cause I respected I know. them. And then I interviewed you and I said, yeah, I, I can't hire. Plus he's Canadian. You know, I mean, we, we can't have that. I know that automatically <laughs> on the resume. <laughs> but no, I mean that's really what it boils down to. You you got to go with a gut feeling, and that's that's the way I've always hired people. And you know uh, I've been uh, right a lot more than I've been wrong, and it's based off of just gut feeling. And just do you believe that this guy one wants the job and will do a good job? And and you can teach people stuff. I mean. You know, I was a horrible writer. I mean, just horrible. And you weren't much better, you know, when you first started. And it's yeah, just, you, get you just got to learn. It's better, like anything yeah. else. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, just one last thing I just wanted to add, because, you know, I, I, you know, I do have a friend who covers Texas football and is like very, like knows the Big 12, like especially schematically and all that kind of stuff better than anyone. And even before, and I, I had asked him, before he knew anything about Stucky he was going to get the job, I asked him, I'm like, what did you think of the Baylor receivers last year? He was like, it's the first year in like, I don't know how many years that they were good. Like that they actually lived up to expectations. Um, you know, they played better than they looked on paper. Right. And so that was Stucky. So, yeah. I mean, there's only one year of, of that, but I mean, it was a good, it was a pretty darn good year. So um, that's definitely, uh, you know, something that, uh, you know, that, that I, I think is like a feather in his cap. Yeah. Can't wait to see how, you know, some of these guys uh, do. I, I I sure would like to see them announced and on the road. You know, I would love to yeah. see that. Um, look, you only get so many days, you know. Let's get this yeah. thing sped up. Let's get it going. I just don't understand why it takes so long. Uh, and, and, you know, Jamie, just the fact that you show up 
at a kid's high school and, you know, you have the bump and all that type of stuff. That just means so much to these kids. Yeah. And uh, so I would love to see these guys get named right away and get out on the road recruiting. And that's that's really important. I just hope that that's what we see happen. Um, all right, we're going to have some time for some questions if you're out there and you want to ask us some questions. Just either type question or put a question mark in front of the question you want, and Jamie and I will answer your questions now. Um, I mean, Jamie, I, I, when you look at who's all coming back, right? We, we were in a world of chaos trying to figure it out. We're still not sure exactly what's going to happen. Uh, I think the only one we're not sure on is Bracey at this point, right? I, you know, yeah. He hasn't said anything, but he's a big, big, important thing. In the end, it looks like we've really only kind of lost Kevin Austin out of all the people that could come back that, that I think were valuable. So I think that Marcus Freeman and the staff did a tremendous job bringing these guys back, and that's going to give them a real chance to, to compete and, and challenge for for a playoff spot this year. And and uh, that was a great recruiting job by the staff. Um, and, you know, look – these agents are in your ear, you know, they're in your ear and, yeah. and we know how, I mean, you want to see, look at the Cole Caleb Williams situation. You know, he didn't come up with that idea on his own. I guarantee you that, you know what no, I mean? He did not. <laughs> he, some agent got in his ear and said, you're never going to be hotter. Go in the portal right now. You know, if you want some money, we're going to get you some money. And, uh, you know, we've heard it's going to be close to 3 million bucks. That guy's going to get, that's insane. And yeah. so the the idea that they brought these guys back, I think they they did a tremendous job, and it's going to be a big big plus and a positive for Notre Dame next year. Uh, you know, in come fall, huge. And 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 I think you know with Austin too, he like the next day after um, the Fiesta Bowl, he had declared. So that was one of those things where it was already in his mind. Like I think we already kind of knew that that's the way he was leaning, even though he got a stay in school grade and all that, right? Like he just. I mean, he went through a lot at Notre Dame and he was just, it was just ready for him to leave. Yeah. So he wanted to, he wanted to take that opportunity. Uh, and with these other guys, you know, you have to convince them to stay and got to give them reason. And specifically, I, I think, you know, with the Adam Rolla twins, yeah, it would, you know, you're trying to convince them to stay, but those guys, I think are right now, I'd say borderline, maybe, you know, maybe Jason get drafted. I don't think Justin would get drafted at this point. Jason, probably like a day three guy yeah. probably but still he's not like doesn't have all the, like the physical attributes that you want um and also i think he'd be a guy who benefit from going to like an all-star game next year and like tearing it up like yeah. showing people that kind of thing against uh against looking at that and but with fosky and patterson like you know both those guys 100 percent they're going to be drafted fosky not going to be a first rounder but still going to be like pretty high um, you got to convince those guys to come back. And at the very least, they were at 50-50 at some point. We're thinking about going. So those are just huge, huge wins. And that often is the difference between, you know, being like a CFP contender or being like, ah, hopefully we get to 10 games. Like, because that's really what it comes down to. Because you look at that 2018 team and imagine that Coney and Tranquil and Tillery had left. Yeah. I mean, that, that's not a very good defense, and it was a great defense that year. So those guys coming back was critical. You know, 2015, obviously, that was like a big year, getting a, like a, a, a Stanley back, um, you know, a Sheldon Day back. Like, those are important. So those are the kind of things where Notre Dame's just not at a point right now where if they have those big guys leave, they can just, oh, plug in and, and play the next guy where it's not going to be a drop-off. Uh, you know, maybe two or three years from now, if they were keep recruiting at the same level, it'd be different. So. but yeah. right now it is, that's where they that's, need to get it's critical to get them. Yeah. 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 I agree. I think it's, to be honest, I think it's a, uh, like probably a plus two or three wins type of situation that, you know, yeah. because they're coming back, it's probably going to be the difference between two or three wins. And that, that's really important. Uh, a couple questions. Um, we're going to just zip through these. Sorry if it's already been covered, but moving forward, where are things with the DC and D line coaching? We did kind of just address that. Uh, we we kind of went through some uh, you know guys that we thought would be good as far as any twenty twenty three recruiting concerns. Yeah, it is a concern. You want to get some guys out there, especially if you you know you want to get a D defensive coordinator out on the road. Uh, you want to get a D line coach out on the road, and they haven't even hired one yet. So it's not even hiring them. It's just then you got to get them through the process. And, you know, if it's 
say it's an NFL guy. Well, then they have to take the test and they have to, you know, there, there's just a lot of yeah. things that has to happen. So yeah, it, time is of the eff- essence and it is a big concern recruiting wise. Um, next question. Do we need another quarterback besides Drew Tyler and Steve? Um, I don't think they need another quarterback. Uh, and I don't think that they want another quarterback, but they may need one at the end of spring. You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. That, that, I think, is when you'll see some things where they'll probably have to look at some stuff, and we'll see where, uh, you know, how, how it all unfolds, whether Tyler starts or Drew or, or who, Steve Angeli. You know, we'll see how it all starts, but uh, you still want to come to, you know, you still want to come to fall camp with three quarterbacks you can play, you know. So if, if one of those guys were to bounce, you're going to have to figure something out. But I wouldn't take one now. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I feel the same, but I also feel the exact same about spring. You'll reevaluate after spring. So if Buckner didn't take the steps that you wanted him to take, if you know Drew Pine isn't kind of stepping forward there into that backup role or into like a place where he's pushing Buckner to maybe be then you reevaluate, right? Yeah. Because um then you're gonna you possibly need it. And then the other way to look at it too, there's going to be quarterback competitions going on around the country. Guys are going to want out after spring. So as much as you see like a Jackson dart come into the thing, you're like, Oh, that's intriguing. He's an intriguing yeah. name. There's going to be other guys like that, that, that pop out too. That's, that's the one thing about this now is <clears throat> with the portal and how everything's working now, it, it's almost like the NBA off season where it's just like, man, there's just something every week just yeah. going on nationally. And I think, you're going to kind of see that after spring, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. All those, all those college football preview magazines are going to look bad because you're going to see like, man, this guy hasn't, this guy's projected star. He's not even on the team anymore. There's going to yeah, be a yeah. lot of that. Yeah, I think so too. I think you're going to see guys transfer mid season too. I really do. I, I, I know there were a few of them this year, you know, uh, uh, Lawrence keys, but, and I'm not saying that at Notre Dame, I'm saying all over the country, you know, you're going yeah. to see that, uh, if things don't work out in fall camp, you know, you're going to see guys bounce. I just really think that's going to happen. Um, interesting question here. Uh, Anthony Weaver is in Baltimore. Why not make a call to him? He's a former DC, did a really good job in Houston. Only coach in D line right now. Former player makes a lot of sense. Uh, first of all, I remember talking to Anthony. He's a fine guy. I mean, just one of the nicest guys and what a great player he was at Notre Dame too. Um, but, you know, does he have any interest in college football? He's never been here, never been involved. You know, I think if there was any school who could take him, it'd probably be Notre Dame would be able to at least convince him. I know he enjoyed his time at Notre Dame and he speaks fondly of him. I, I interviewed him after uh, he left Notre Dame and was in the NFL. Really great guy. Um, but just hasn't popped up. I haven't heard his name mentioned at all. Thoughts there, Jamie? <clears throat> I would almost think because he's been in the NFL for so long and done a great job. Like, yeah, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, get he's been in situations where, yeah, not just get your pension, but he's lost, you know, his job because his head coach got fired and he gets snapped up right away to another team. Like all the time that's happened to him. You know, he's been with like, you know, four or five different franchises and done a good job with each of them. So he, he would have to really want it. I think like he would have to say, Oh, like I'm coming and I want to be DC. I, I think he would probably be like, well, I'll come if, you know, if you want, I'd be D line coach and DC. He was, yeah. uh, you know, for uh, a brief time and, and for Houston as well. So maybe that, but I almost think he would have to initiate. You might give him a call and just say, Hey, just check in whatever. And he's probably like, nah, I'm good. I'm, you know, with the Baltimore Ravens, a pretty good franchise. So. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Interesting question. Is there any thought of looking at brew McCoy? I, no, no way in hell. <laughs> I couldn't no. imagine that ever happening. No. I, you know, and I just, um, that guy's been, I don't know, just seemed to be a problem everywhere he's been. You know, it just nothing has worked out for him, no matter where he's been. And a lot of times you just have to look at, well, maybe it's not where you've been and it's you, you know? And I don't know the kid, so I, maybe I shouldn't say that. But anytime you Sometimes see a guy bounce kids around. Sometimes immature and, and they, <clears throat> yeah. but anytime you see a guy like that bounce around that much, it's, very rarely is it a good sign that that guy is going to end up being a player and anywhere. Yeah. I, yeah. Anywhere. So I would imagine that there's not going to be too many big schools that even give him a shot. It'll, he'll be like at a group of five school or something like that. And some will take a chance on him and we'll see if he can play, but who knows? 
Yeah. No, I think that's what you're going to see too. Uh, how much did Elston have to do with the guys who decided to come back? Any additional risk with him leaving? It's a good question. We kind of addressed it before. Um, I think those guys have made that decision, uh, but I do think if if Marcus Freeman is smart, he better be having a whole lot of communication with those guys a lot until he gets his guys hired. Um, because, again, these agents – look, they all have agents now because of the NIL, right? All these guys have agents now. It's not like, you know – Guys are knocking on the door and you're not letting them in. They already have agents. So, you know, trust me, they're going to be in their ear. And so I'm sure that it's something that they've already discussed and and uh, hopefully, it, you know, it won't be an issue. Anything you want to add? Well, I just think that those guys, from what I know about, like, his relationship with a lot of the guys on the D-line is I have a feeling like those guys had an idea that he was even thinking about Michigan before – um, a lot of people. So they, not to say that when they made their decisions, but like pretty, maybe like a couple day or a day before, a couple days or a day before that everybody's, you know, started kind of leaking out. So I think, I, I don't imagine that he would have ever encouraged them to be like, well, now you got to leave. Like, yeah, he wouldn't do that. So no, no, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah, he wouldn't do now he'll go try and take Notre Dame's twenty twenty three recruits. Oh, he's definitely and, and, you know he's already that, sure. that that's yeah. going to happen certainly. Uh, and yeah. and you know he should. That's his job. But yeah. uh, hopefully they'll be, be able to hold. Job. He's trying to not trying to get Keon Keeley and Brandon Vernon to Michigan. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Next question: If the wide receiver room was down in numbers, why did Kelly? Why didn't Kelly move on from Dell? And why did it take a coaching change to make that happen? Well, again, that's. Brian Kelly doesn't like firing anybody, and he just never has. He's always and, been slow. Yeah, to, and, to make and, and you know, to be honest with you folks, I, I I just don't think Brian Kelly cares that much about winning. I just don't. And, um, you know, he talks a big game, but I just don't think he cares. As long as people are off him and he is making money. I mean, I really think the whole LSU thing was a money grab. I absolutely believe that. I don't think it's about him wanting to – um uh, test, you know, whether he can be successful at the highest level. I don't think he cares. He's going to get a hundred million dollars. That's all he cares about. And they can fire him tomorrow and he's going to get $90 million. So it's, I just don't think that he has the competitive spirit that some of these other guy, great coaches do. And I think you're going to find that with LSU uh, when, when he's there. I mean, what's the first thing Brian Kelly did when, when he went down there? What do you think he did? Took a vacation. I mean, he basically did. That's what he did. That's what he did. I mean, uh, he's not out there calling a bunch of guys. I mean, that's just that's what he did. He's not out there recruiting and going crazy like like Marcus Freeman is. You know, it's a money grab. So I, I really think that that's what it is. I just never felt Brian Kelly had that true desire to win. I don't think hurting or losing hurt as bad to him as it does to a lot of other guys. He's so. definitely not as obsessive about it as no, no. The, the top guys. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, question, Mike, you mentioned a big name college coach was leaving for the NFL and he had to do, well, I think that a lot of people thought that that was Jim Harbaugh, but uh, I, I look, I mean, <laughs> that was all the scuttlebutt that, that was talking amongst these agents, but I have a feeling it's not happening. Why would Mike Elston go to Michigan unless he was assured that Jim Harbaugh isn't leaving. You know what I mean? I would never take that job. I'd want to know directly from Jim Harbaugh, I'm not leaving. I would not be moving if that were the case. So I I, I don't think Harbaugh is leaving now. What do you think? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, I unless, you know, uh, the Raiders came in with, you know, because obviously the Raiders were the the – team that was mentioned with them but and i, you know, I think that, that was what was going then, to happen and then i think that kind of be a soccer kept his and, job you know yeah 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 so um i mean who knows right if the raiders get blown out by some i mean how do you yeah well you know something may happen then yeah yeah but i mean you got to give the guy credit for even getting him there you know what i mean that's a hell of a coaching job he did it's also a leverage play right like yeah. oh he, yeah he just took a pay cut because they weren't yeah. doing well and now he no. wants more money again well right? yeah i would i would i would hold I mean, michigan I, to the fire if i absolutely, were hard absolutely. i mean they publicly shamed him you know and they, they did yeah. they publicly shamed yeah. him and and i didn't think that was right but hey it is what it is and he kept his job and so you know the only reason they didn't get rid of him was they just didn't they couldn't get anybody I the mean, better Half the reason I think they won this year is because he was like F you to them. Yeah, no, I think so like, too. I, I think yeah, so too. Yeah. yeah. 
I agree 100%. Uh, next question. When would you expect Reese to really push and lock up a 2023 Q- QB? Usually the cool, uh, quarterback is the leader of the class, most of the offensive side. So it would be imperative to ND to lock a kid down soon. Yeah, I I, I agree. Um, um, my guess is Notre Dame's going to try and get Dante Moore on, on campus again and try and figure out, hey, you know, when are you going to do this? And – you know, depending on what he says, you know, then they'll probably turn up the heat on Jackson Arnold is what I would think. Um, I don't know. And at some point, I think, I think right now the either or situation really isn't that great in their minds in that, you know, is, is Dante more that much better and worth holding, waiting out for. And I, I think that that is becoming less and less an answer of no, you know what I mean? I think it's 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 they're going to have to make a decision soon, and I, I don't think that they feel like the difference between the two is that great. Anything you want to add? Yeah, and 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 I would say spring because most of these guys, most that's how it usually rolls out with the quarterbacks, right? Is that those guys kind of want to get it done with in the spring, and they'll take on officials and officials in the spring, and I, I would guess in the spring they'll have they'll have their guy. Yeah. At some point. You no, know, I'm sure. Yeah. I would guess by probably March or April for sure. March, April, yeah. Yeah. All right. Next question. What's your story behind Elston leaving? Will we see any defensive line attrition without uh well, I don't know about D line. I mean, I don't think anybody will leave because of him uh not being there. You know, I don't I don't I don't see that happening. Um you know, as far as why he left, you know, I we kind of broached that before. You know, I'd heard he really liked the opportunity at LSU, but his his wife and kids didn't want to leave. They didn't want to move that far away. And and uh, and I think it was interesting that when he came out, Jamie, and he had his speech, it was all about his family and not wanting to move his family and them not wanting to move. What he didn't say is, I love this place and I don't ever want to leave here, you know? So yeah. when I heard that, I was like, yeah, it sounds like, you know, your wife wanted you and your family wanted you to stick around more than you did. And, you know, later on we hear that he did have a real strong interest in LSU. It's just the family just didn't want to leave. And, you know, because it's Michigan, it's not far. You know, I, I think that that's really what I it mean, boiled down That's where he went to school. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, all right. We're going to answer. Uh, if you have one more question, give us a question. Type it out, put question, and then uh, we'll answer it. We're going to answer a couple more and we'll call it good. We got one right here, Jimmy. Is Buckos the worst poster on ISD? What do you think, Jamie? I mean, I would love to slander Buckos, but no, nah, he's not even close. He's not even close. To Are me, you sure? I, I, I'm positive. I know I know Buckos is listening to this right now, so I'm not trying to pander to him, but uh, honestly, I, I'd say he's one of the best. Love Buckos. One of the best? One of the best. Oh, God. See, somebody's kissing Bucko's butt. I'm never going to hear the end of this now, man. All right. Folks, if you got a question, feel free to give us a question, and, and uh, we'll, we'll answer it. Also, if you're not a member of Irish Sports Daily, it's a great time to sign up. You can go to the front page of Irish Sports Daily, click on the premium section, and uh, sign up. Also, if you're not uh, a subscriber of our YouTube channel, you can subscribe at the bottom there. Just click on the subscribe button. Also, click on the little bell there, and that'll alert you when we go live and uh, that type of thing. So uh, I've got another question here. All right. Uh, do you wait until after spring to add a wide receiver or a corner in the portal? Uh, no, I think you if you can get them, you want them right now. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I think that they'll probably get a, at least one wide receiver. Uh, you know, they're shaking the trees for sure on that. Uh, but, you know, hopefully 2022, I'd love to see the Justice Lowe kid. I, I like that kid. Uh, you know, I think he's a developmental kid, but I think his top end speed is is something that that they could really use, especially with Lindsey being gone next year. He's a kid who can really run, and and I think he's a guy that could develop. Uh, but I would guess they'd try and go after the corners. Just going to be hard to get. Period. I mean, yeah, there's just none out there. The ones that are in there, you're just not somebody you're going to want to deal with. So, or you know, I, I just don't think they're going to be a big upgrade over what you currently have. All right, question here. Can we expect Christian Gray to commit soon? You know, I, I saw, I think he said he was thinking like February or March, you know, when he was going to pull a trigger, but May sooner. It wouldn't surprise me. I think once they get him on campus again, 
you know, it would not surprise me if he pulled the trigger. I think Notre Dame's in great shape with him, and I like him. He's a good player. What do you think of him? I like Christian Gray a lot. Um, yeah. You know, I think it's physical kind of press corner type. Um, I I think that would 100% take right now, and I obviously they want him. Um, I, I I would think that, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being like the next 2023 guy yeah. uh, in the class. Wouldn't surprise me either. All right. Next question, is Brian Kelly winning been better for business or Brian Kelly leaving? Brian Kelly leaving. Yeah, definitely. People just – I mean, it, I just think it's a – there were a lot of people who had uh, uh, an opinion about it, and there were a lot of people who hated him. There were a lot of people who thought he did a good job but just was never going to get uh, to the top. I Over think you and I yeah. – I think you and I were in that category. And then there were a lot of people who – thought he was the best coach and there was nothing you could do better. And, uh, and, and I think he buffaloed a lot of people into thinking that he loved Notre Dame and loved this place. And I never got that feeling. And I know you didn't either. So, no. um, you know, I just look, he's gone. Um, I think, I think Notre Dame's in a better situation or at least I should say Notre Dame has the opportunity to upgrade and, and get into a better position now with Marcus Freeman. And we're seeing him working his butt off, you know, we'll see. It's a gamble. It's it's always been a gamble to take a guy no with no head coaching experience. So, uh, 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 the guy wants to know who who here remembers Smitty from the old IRJ days. I remember him well. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in a while, but yeah, he's I remember him very well. All right, how what do we got here? How much control does Marcus Freeman have in hiring the defensive coordinator? How much control? I mean, I think I, I, it's his decision. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I don't think Swarbrick. Oh, he's like does Swarbrick keep I don't a think tighter leash hire, on him? No, I, I no. I don't think I don't think it's tighter than Brian Kelly. But I think if 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 you're asking whether or not, uh, you know, like Lane Kiffin hired some coordinators that had some very questionable past, like those guys are never getting hired at Notre Dame. I don't care who the coach is. Yeah. Right. So I don't think Marcus Freeman is going to have carte blanche to hire just anybody if. Yeah. that person has something in their past that is unseemly, they're not getting hired, but that would change from no matter who the coach is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Should, should Marcus Freeman name the entire roster as captain devoid any potential opt outs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's never going to end. I mean, you know, and it is what it is. People, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to do about captain, you know? I, I I like the idea of going every game. I really do. I like the idea of having two, an offensive and a defensive captain, and then naming a couple captains each week uh, based off of you know their leadership. I like the special teams captain too because it usually rewards a guy, you know, not necessarily the kicker or the punter, but you're rewarding a guy who, you know, has like busted his butt and done something like, you know, making plays down the field. Like, like, uh, like a early in his career, Bo Bauer, you know, or something like that for just really like kind of. You like it just because you only played special teams. No, well, that, that, that's not true. <laughs> they took me off. I was too slow, but they took me off. I was too slow, but uh, I did block a punt. There you I go. There you go. In college, though, the so, Yama yeah. blocked a punt. Well, that's one yeah. more punt than yeah. I blocked in yeah. college and yeah. or in high school. I didn't block one in high school either. All right. Uh, what were your feelings on Heacock? Do you feel, uh, or how do you feel about things not working out? I personally wasn't a fan of hiring him. Your thoughts. What do you think, Jamie? We'll make this the last question. Well, yeah. Yeah. We kind of laid it out, right? Like I would have, I, I think it, like a lot of people would have been happy because he obviously is going to bring this level of competency and the, the defense was going to be good with him they were going to be good it's very much like a clark lee where you're like you know the defense is going to be good you know a guy who's he's experienced he's going to adjust he's going to do all these things that to make that uh the defense very good right what you don't know about him is whether or not he's going to be able to recruit at the level that you need to or if that's going to be something where freeman and chad bowden and everybody else on the staff is going to have to kind of pick up the slack for him and you don't want to have too many of those guys in your thing. And you can see what having a Marcus Freeman as a defensive coordinator can do for, you know, your recruiting and the defense as a whole. Right. Um, so you want to be able to ha kind of have that there. And 
I don't think he would have necessarily been that. So in that sense, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, if it's like Mason or Belk, those guys have higher, much higher upsides as recruiters. Yeah, certainly as recruiters. I think with uh, Heacock, he was a good, safe choice, you know, for a defensive coordinator. Um, at a time where a, a good, safe choice would make sense, uh, especially if he was a good recruiter. We don't know that about Heacock, and we don't know whether he will, you know, be somebody who's going to push out there and really do that. And Notre Dame had that with Clark Lee, a guy that just really didn't recruit that well and, and didn't even really try to recruit hard and it's kind of a disaster, and, and Notre Dame is kind of in the position they are defensively because of that, I think. You know, when you look at uh, linebacker and how they struggled, uh, you know, this year because they just didn't have anybody they could really plug in there because of injuries and, and lack of bodies, uh, you're going to see that with D-line coming up here. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think that um, – he would have made a lot of sense in the way that Harry Heastan makes a lot of sense in that you want to get off to a good start as a coach, right? As a, Especially as a first-year head coach. Uh, and and it, it makes sense to take that safe option because they yeah. can help you. The floor at, is very high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you, they can help you get to where you want to be, and, and you, know, you don't have to worry about it as much. And so uh, I think that's it. I guess we got one more here, and we're going we're gonna to do one more question. That's it. Okay. Um, do you believe Reese has complete control of the offense, recruiting, play calling, game strategy, coaching hires? Um, if yes, is that too risky? Does Freeman really have another option? I do think that he has complete control of the offense. I do think that he has final say. Well, I shouldn't say final say, but certainly the the most say on offensive recruiting. Uh, you know, I think Marcus Freeman would have final say. Uh, but play calling, all of that, game strategy, all that. Uh, coaching hires. No, I don't think he has final say, but I think that Marcus Freeman will listen to him heavily. Yeah. Yeah. And and listen to him heavily on that. But I don't think that Reese gets to hire the guy, um, you know, without getting the approval of the head coach. Uh, and then, uh, you know, is that too risky? Um, no, I don't don't think think so. so. You know, I think Tommy's done a really good job. I really do in, in many, many ways, especially for a guy who is really un- inexperienced. Um, you know, I think it's gone about as well as you could possibly hope, considering all the things that he's had to overcome. I, I honestly believe it's gone about as well as it possibly could. And uh, and that's a credit to Tommy. And, you know, Tommy doesn't have the pizzazz of a, a Marcus Freeman, but he works his ass off in recruiting. I mean, Tommy oh, yeah, really yes. does work hard in recruiting. And, and he does make lots of calls. Uh, you know, I know uh, Scott Raritan, uh, Eli's dad, and I are real tight. You know, Reese did a ton of calling with that. As long as him and McNulty, they they did a ton of calling with him, and and Reese was very very much involved, and and he was a big player in why they decided to choose Notre Dame too. Um, they really liked Tommy, so he does a really good job. Um, you know, as far as other options go, I mean, right now I don't really see another option or why you would need one at this point. You know. Uh, I think they really – they got a good system right now. Um, you know, I think Harry will be a good add, you know, at least for the first couple of years for sure, to kind of stabilize things and get these guys going, and then we'll see how the recruiting goes. But, uh, you know, with the Chancey Stuckey, you know, is he a great wide receivers coach? We don't know, but it sounds like he's a guy who wants to recruit and sounds like somebody who uh, they have a lot of respect for. So um, we just got to hope for the best, Jamie. That's all we can hope for. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do think too, I don't, I like the idea of having young guys mixed in with veterans. So like he Stan and McNulty are the veterans obviously yeah. who've, you know, with decades of experience. And then you have like the youth of, I mean, Lance Taylor's obviously coached a while, but he's still like a young guy. Reese is a young guy. Stucky's a young guy, you yeah. know, and that's why too, I thought, you know, Heacock, uh, especially with Elston leaving, right? Like that would have been a veteran a good thing, there. Yeah it would have yeah. been a good thing. So that almost makes you think too, where, I mean, Mason. not that it would be bad if you hired a, a, a young defensive line coach, but Mason having that, yeah, it, that, that experience, I think it does, it does go something. And I think hundred percent, you know, and you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to kick Mike Elson on the way out, but he didn't do a great job in the, as a defensive coordinator in that game. And I think his lack of experience showed as a defensive coordinator 
And you don't want to have to worry about that kind of stuff. So if Marcus Freeman wants to be the head coach and he wants to do all these things and wants to not worry about the defense as much, I mean, I think getting a guy who you know is going to have control over there is important. All right, folks, that's going to be it. I appreciate you guys uh, watching us here. And uh, once again, you can sign up for irishsportsdaily.com by going to the front page, click on premium and sign up. Also, make sure you uh, subscribe to our premium or, or not our premium our YouTube channel. It's free. Uh, just click the subscribe button and uh, also click the bell to let us know that, you know, when we're all, uh, live and everything. And uh, Jimmy and I'll be doing more of these in the near future. And he also does a great job with Greg Flamong. They also do the hit and hustle on our YouTube live. So check those out as well. So that's it folks. Have a good weekend. Hopefully we'll have more great news and uh, we'll be ready to talk on power hour. Uh, hopefully there'll be some more breaking news over the weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.